So I, I guess let's get started. I, I'd like to know, I guess, how, how it began for you, your relationship with Mr. Lynch. Was it an audition, or did a casting director contact you for Mulholland Drive? Yes, it was Joanna Ray, his casting director, and um, I had just done a movie with uh, her son, and um, she rem- she remembered me and had me go. Um, she they they wanted me to go and meet him the same day that I got the call, and I was in warm ups, so I said I can't today. I'll do it tomorrow. So then when I went, um, I was so excited that I was meeting such a master, uh, and um, I got in a uh, car accident on the way. I oh had not gosh. read a script. And I just was floored when I uh, was told that the opening of the uh, movie was a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> that, that had to have felt kind of like it was meant to be in, in an odd way. There was a little bit of a of a sign inside me that that, that just resonated, and I just thought it was very odd. Um, yeah. And I did feel pretty pretty good about it. <laughs> did you? Uh, what was your consciousness of of, of Lynch's work? previous to that experience of meeting him? Well, I had seen um, the pilot of Twin Peaks and um, just, you know, it was as if I had seen a movie and it uh, it was remarkable. I was in awe. Uh, There were no words to describe uh, the experience I I went through when I saw that. And, um, you know, that's one thing I, I, I admire so much about his work is he really knows how to craft an experience. And whether it's his music uh, his paintings, whatever it is that he does, it's always with uh, having people go through a little journey inside mm-hmm. them, and um, and that's what I find so so remarkable about his work is that it's very different for every person. It's very deep. Um, Elephant Man was one of the movies that moved me the most. I mean, that just it touched me so deeply. I would I, I would cry for hours mm. when I saw that. You know, you're so right about him, uh, about those qualities. And I find that you can get lost in a Lynch film more than any other director I know. And, and it's it's this kind of hypnotic quality that his films have. Be, mm-hmm. the, the, the balance between image and, and sound, particularly. Mm-hmm. He's such a master at sound. It just It's just transfixing. That's that's right. I think uh, his um, musical background really helps, and he's got a sound room in his home. And he also, you know, one of the things I remember was uh, he he always talked to his crew about creating a mood. So if the decoration was too light or, you know, um, the car was not precisely the one that was described in his script... You know, it had to be changed. I mean, he was very specific, and it was always about the mood. I found that to be very interesting. Um, I think more and more people are now incorporating that. You know, you see the TV shows; they all, it all, you know, they have a certain mood. But um, you know, when you think about it, it is uh, a mood that we go for when we go to see a movie. It changes our state, and that's why we go. A good movie, you forget your life. You forget your issues and your problems, and you're transported. And he's just a genius at, at doing that. And every movie is very different. So, it, it, although he does leave his signature in all his films, which is so interesting, right? Absolutely, um, yeah. You know, but, but we talk about being transported, and obviously, as a viewer watching a film like Mulholland Drive, we're definitely transported to a different mm-hmm. state of consciousness. But when you're on his set, do you feel that quality? Do you kind of feel transported in a way? Absolutely. As soon as you walk onto the set, you you feel a peace. You feel a relaxation. Um, It's another world. And I think it's because he's the leader, you know, and it's his vision. And his calm resonates you know, to to the set and to the people, and um, even though they're busy and working like any other set, there's a certain, there's a feeling of peace underneath all that. And I remember recalling every time I walked onto set, it was like, here we go. You know, like I was going to as soon as we walked in, onto the you know stage, it was a, a different feeling, a little magic. And mm. if that, yeah, no, it's remarkable. And then as soon as you're about to actually shoot your scene, he would come up. And give you, you know, his uh, direction, and he would do it. He would transport you even further with his uh, words, 
the pitch of his voice um, and his hands. And he then would be like a poet in mm. similes and metaphors, and he just put you in the world. I mean, really, it was very effortless. <laughs> it was literally very effortless. That, that's actually a question that I had, how specific he was with his direction. Well, he's he's very concerned about, as I said before, the mood. So that was very important to him. Um, you know, we, we, we honored his words precisely. I do remember improvising once, and he said, keep that. But it was one of those things that wasn't done on purpose. It just kind of came out. And he liked it. It was just, you know, a very small thing, uh, thing that I said. But um, for the most part, I think there's perfection in, in the on paper. So I didn't, you know, I don't recall Naomi ever improvising. And the only one word I improvised was, uh, you know, when I was knocking on the door. And um, I just, you know, I don't know, something very small, you know, but he ended up liking it. So. Well, when I see performances in in his films, they feel like they have a sense of freedom to them. Mm. Like like you're able to work just from your kind of unbridled imagination mm -hmm. uh, in, in a way that other filmmakers might not allow. And and you know my the Lynch film that changed my life was Wild at Heart. Mm -hmm. I. I watched that film and I thought, oh, anything is possible in film. <laughs> and it was so it was so impossibly passionate that film. Well, the, and, the scene with William Defoe uh, and Laura oh. Dern in the hotel room, and he's walking towards her, and the way you can really feel that energy, that sexual energy, you know, oh. erupting, and then he walks away very cruelly, and that just ev evokes an emotion in you, you know, because it's so different and so odd and so. He he played it out, you know, there was a lot of time, and that's one thing that I remember. He would say, milk it, just milk it. And, you know, you would try to milk it, and you would try to make it, you know, as long as you could, and then when you saw it, it wasn't even that long. It was mm. crazy. It was almost timeless, a very, very mm. strange um, and beautiful experience. Did you, did you feel the freedom, though, to be yes. b bold with your choices? Absolutely. He... As I said, he, the only direction that he gave me um, were in similes and metaphors. So when I was walking up the stairs, he he never says, you're feeling like this or that. It's like a kitty cat, Laura. Mm. And then um, when I was scared, you know, when in, in, the, in the beginning of the film, when I was, uh, you know, at uh, Betty's house, it was as it, he, he said, there's just like this black cloud following you wherever you go. And so... I'm no longer thinking, you know, I'm scared. I'm, you know, I, there's no thoughts. It was just a feeling of this black cloud glooming over me. And, you know, I've continued to use that kind of direction in my own head. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, for, for, the, for the rest of the films I've made because it was so impactful to me. Yeah. Let, let me backtrack just a little bit. Was he at the uh, the first casting session that you attended? Oh, yeah. So 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 I waited in the waiting room for, I don't know, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. They gave me the script, and that's when I read that uh, scene, you know, the, the opening scene with the accident. And then we walked up the hill to his studio and walked in, sat down, and he just looked at me for the longest time. <laughs> he held eye contact, yeah, and, and then he the first words that came out of his mouth was, was actually one word. He said, good, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> so I started giggling. You know, <laughs> it's really funny. And, you know, we... we we clicked because we were both meditators. You know, he's that's why you feel this peace on set, and that's why these genius ideas. That's why I think his, he, he, he's, he, you know, his work is far exceeds excellence and mastery, because he's coming from a deeper place. You know, and um, mm -hmm. so he was floored when he found out that I was also a meditator, and not only that, but a transcendental meditator. You know, since I was mm. fourteen, and um, so he saw my headshot. And well, he had seen the headshot before I arrived, and then he played me the music, and it evoked so many feelings in me that I just looked to the side, and he looked at me, and it wasn't until after, um, and it was a, 
a long piece of music, you know, Angelo Badalimentis. And I looked to the side not knowing that I'd be in the limo looking out to the side. And I found out later that he plays some music to see if he can picture the actor in the movie because he does not make you audition. Hmm. So, yeah, so it was very, very good, um, you know, meeting. And I walked out and, and Joanna, we were walking and we were kind of floaty, like a floaty feeling, mm-hmm. walking down the hill. And we were halfway down when she was so cool, Joanna, with her little red hair, little bob. She said, that went well. He liked you. Because <laughs> mm. she'd been working with him for, for so long. And, you know, I wasn't told that I got the role for months, a couple months. And I read the script, and Joanna calls me, and she said, why haven't you called me? I mean, you know, David is horrified that you might not like the script. And I said, I didn't know I was supposed to call you. I didn't know that I was supposed to, you know, have a big mm-hmm. stamp of approval and say yes. <laughs> Very funny. Um, I thought they'd call me. And, of course, then we had to do a screen test for ABC because it was a TV show originally. Right. And David protected his actors, and he would not, not let any of the executives come to the set. And, um, you know, they were, he called it a camera test. And, you know, then I was told a couple months after. I mean, it was a very long process. Mm. Yeah. Well, how much of the of – the, um, did you just shoot a, a pilot or did you shoot beyond that? No, we shot the, the pilot. Okay. And um, it wasn't uh, – I, I forgot if it was nine months or a year later that um, – well, first we we got turned down. And we were all just devastated because – they, you know, ABC had, had said it was too dark. And, you know, this was years ago. I think TV has gotten a lot edgier now. But, you know, we just couldn't believe that that had happened. And there was a feeling inside me that it wasn't over. I kept seeing Mulholland Drive everywhere. And, I just, mm. and you know, when David said that to me, I said, no, David, it's not dead. It's mm. going to revive. <laughs> And so when we were at Cannes, he he did say, Laura is the only one that believed. Because I did. I I, I just felt it in in my body. There was something. Everywhere I looked, I would see the actors from his previous films. And, um, you know, you you have intuition sometimes. You just feel things. Right. Right. And and then he announced that that it was going to be an international uh, movie. We couldn't believe it. And then he you shook know, my hand and he said, but there's going to be nudity. <laughs> <laughs> very, very sweet. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting that you that you say that it, it was too dark for television at the time because it, you're absolutely right. In, in the climate of today with TV, I, I think it would absolutely be a go project. And if you look at the quality of TV today, I think you can trace that back to Twin Peaks. I think that's the mm-hmm. that's the moment when TV started to change in a big Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And that's what he does. He you see so many films that have little Lynchian little, you know, things. And, mm-hmm. and if mm-hmm. you're a big fan, you you notice these things. Um but uh you're absolutely right. I just finished watching a, a TV series and the whole the whole premise for two seasons was who killed uh, Rosie Larson. And the it killing, was, yes. Yeah. yeah, right. And it, and it was, you know, made in Denmark, whatever. But it's still intriguing, the the, the story of who who did it. And you, it really is reminiscent of, of Twin Peaks, you know, all the different... Very clues. much. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, your character in the film, um, I mean, she's a fascinating, mysterious character. And there's also a touch of kind of old Hollywood glamour mm-hmm. uh, to her. D- did he have you reference any performances or older films not at all (laughs) Mm. that's uh, that was one of the most shocking things for me was arriving in Cannes and I remember feeling very vulnerable because you know my agent wasn't there my manager wasn't there my publicist wasn't there I was there alone and um I was, my mom just said, the last words that she said to me as I got on the plane was, just radiate your love, Laura. You'll be fine. (laughs) And so um, when I woke up and I had phone calls and faxes and, you know, everybody was 
like did you did you see the International Herald Tribune? Did you see the Nice Matin, which is the newspaper, you know, front page of you know the, the, that newspaper in Cannes? I was being compared to Ava Gardner, Rita Hayworth, and Marilyn Monroe, and I thought, oh my God, and that was just from <laughs> David saying, "Walk like a kitty cat, Laura." <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm a dancer, so the kitty cat yeah. is very sensual, and I and I and I got it. You know I wasn't that much of a dancer back then, but dancing's been in my blood for forever. You know and and you know cats move very slow and very sensually and very you know like snakes. Yeah. You know so that was a perfect little metaphor for me. Similarly. That is a great. That is a great direction, actually. Mm. It, it, do Do you find that you call upon kind of uh, animal imagery quite a bit in your work since? Maybe not um, animal imagery, but I work with uh, metals, or um, sometimes I'll play a song in my head. That's amazing experience. Acting with a song in your head is amazing. But um, I do use. You know the the metaphors and the similes for for different things. Um, sometimes you know um, when you want to be really hard, you imagine that like your backbone is metallic, or that you have stones in your shoes if you're broken. Um, mm-hmm. You know if you're angry that you're on fire, that type of thing. Back to the film. You know, as as someone that loves Lynch's works and I I, I rewatch his movies, they they do mean something different to me. They deepen for me as the years go on. Mm. Um, they constantly kind of evolve with me, which, which makes it a fascinating um, thing for me. For you, it, I mean, you're shooting the movie. You're intimately involved in it. When you finally saw the finished film for the first time did it feel even though you're in it did it feel like a completely kind of new experience for you absolutely mm. it, we saw um the film for the first time at, in david's house in his um screening room and we were speechless naomi and i were very speechless because you know don't forget we we did um the pilot, and then we shot an extra 18 pages, and it was recut. Mm. So when we read the eight, extra 18 pages, I don't think either one of us really understood what was going to happen. But the way that he put it together was just beautiful, you know. And and I agree with you. Every time you see it, it's a different experience. And I haven't seen it for years, but I do remember that every single time I saw it, I went through complete different set of emotions and different interpretations and I think that David loves the mystery and he and he did used to say in Khan um, never give it away never never you know there's so many interpretations and it's up to every person so um, it was we didn't have the right answer and he made right. sure we knew that that there, there was a lot of right answers and uh, even so I, I, I know that he loves he loves that mysterious quality. Um, he loves not spelling out things for an audience to make them kind of come to the movie instead mm-hmm. of having the movie just do all the work for them. Um, but as an actor, I would think that you would have to have answers. You would have to know exactly where you're going, why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, did you have to make sense of your interpretation of the script before you could perform it? The interpretation came after. It was very confusing because we had shot so many things, um, which he asked me not to not to actually talk about. But there, my character had a lot, you know, of stuff happening um, to me. So I, uh, when I, you know, I didn't know what was going to stay and what was going to go. I operated on trust and. If anybody knows film, it's David Lynch. That's why his work is being taught at universities. That's why his movies have their own resurgences. They're timeless. They're classic, mm-hmm. you know, classical pieces. And so there was one time that I disagreed with him, and I told him, and um, you know, I ended up doing what he said because he's, you know, <laughs> he's a genius. Uh, so it, you know, it ended up it, it worked. He was yeah. right. Yeah. 
I, I just have one more question for you. You've been so great with your time. Thank you so much. Sure, um, absolutely. You know, the the esteem that uh, Mulholland Drive is held in is, is phenomenal. I mean, it's it, Sight and Sound did their list of the greatest films ever made, and mm-hmm. uh, Mulholland Drive was something like 28 or something. It was, it was the highest ranking and most recent film mm. on that whole list. Oh, what my you, goodness. Yeah, what do you attribute Yeah, it made a that? lot of lists. I remember through the years there's been people emailing me telling me it made this list and won this award for Best Kiss. <laughs> and, you know, it's actually playing in Los Angeles right now at the Newark Theater, which Ooh. I found it very interesting that, you know, David is timeless. You know, the, the, his movies do resurface. They, they re, you know, the, the university kids um, like it, you know, they and, and they just keep playing. And I just saw that at the Newark they were playing, and I was very surprised. It, they are timeless. I mean, they're they're going to last as long as there there is film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They'll be there. But w- what do you think people connected to with Mulholland Drive? I think um, I think as a human being, we all have had dreams that didn't come true, and you know what you wanted to be when you were a child uh, changes when you're a teenager and changes when you're an adult. And I think that sense of disillusionment and, and sense of not knowing sometimes what is real and what isn't, you know, when you're dreaming, that world becomes real. So who's to say that this world, when we're conscious, is the real world, you know? And I think that that is a little seed that is planted inside of people about consciousness. It, it provokes uh, questions and I feel like we're very alive when we ask questions and we kind of die when we stop wanting to know, we stop wondering. Yeah. And I think that Lynch's films give you like a surge of life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let me let me tell you, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you uh, oh. about his movies. I'm so passionate about them and, and I think you're so great. And thank you thank so you. much. Oh, thank you so much. And I just... Uh, I just want to, you know, give a tribute to to Emily by saying that, you know, David and I have um, several things in common. You know, first of all, we both love privacy. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we both meditate. And thirdly, we both love Emily, his wife. She's super adorable. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. I and he appreciate really, it. She's really, she's really inspired him to, to do even greater work. So hopefully we'll see another movie soon. Oh, my gosh. I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm salivating for another film. Absolutely. Have a Thank great day. Thank you so much. You You're too. welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.